Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Got an air conditioner here that uh, it'll start up, um, but the fan doesn't spin. I'll show you uh, kind of what the symptoms are here. So right now the the thermostat is turned on inside. So when we turn this on here, the compressor starts, but the fan does not. Now if we take and we give this a spin. So, uh, given that the fan will start after we give it a spin, uh, that indicates to me that the motor is probably okay, and we're probably looking at a bad capacitor. So now today, you can see that we have a dual rated capacitor. Sometimes there's a dedicated capacitor for the fan, and sometimes there's a dual rated capacitor for both the fan and the compressor. So we're going to go ahead and check that now. So here we have a 35.5 capacitor. 35 is for the uh, compressor and 5 is for the fan. You can see on the top here, we've got Herm right there. That's uh, for the compressor. Fan, that's for the fan obviously. And Common, this is basically the power feeding into this. Now obviously make sure you have the power off and then also before you touch these terminals, you grab the insulated side of a screwdriver and just short these out across the top because it can potentially store a little charge of electricity. This is almost never the case, but it's still worth it anyway. All right, we've got our tester in uh, capacitor testing mode. You can see right here that it says uh, NF, or nanofares. Now, in order to test the capacitor, we've got to pull one of the wires off for the fan or the uh, compressor. So we're going to go ahead and pull this brown wire off, which is the fan wire. And then we're going to test this uh, between the terminals and see what the rate reading is. So it's reading at 10 nanofarads, which is incorrect, and it's probably not, uh, so there's obviously some kind of a short inside of this capacitor here, so that is incorrect, that should be five. We'll just check the compressor one. I'm assuming that one's fine, because the compressor started okay. This should be 35. Now I'm checking between the common and Herm. And that one's not reading correctly either. So it was still enough that the compressor would start, but it's not correct. So we're gonna get a new 35.5 capacitor, and it has to be at 440 volts, you can see right here. Now you can always, um, if you have a 440 volt capacitor, you need to replace it with a 440 volt. But if it was 370, uh, you can always um, put in a bigger capacitor, so you could put in a 440 is fine but you can never replace a 440 with a 370, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go get a 440 capacitor that is a 35 plus five, and hopefully we'll be good to go. Here's our replacement capacitor. You can see that this is 440 or 370 volt. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and test that just so you can see how that works here. So again, we put one on the common, which is this one here, and we'll do one on the fan first. So this should be five, microfarad yep right on the money now it can be plus or minus uh, five percent on this particular capacitor now we're going to come into the herm and there we got 35.01 right here as you can see it says plus or minus five percent we're gonna hook this puppy up and see if this takes care of it we'll uh, start by just putting the fan and the herm ones on so the brown goes to the fan just confirm when you pull it off the old one that you put them back on the same terminals and then uh, pull these two off this uh, is the power coming from the contactor here and then this is one of the legs of power going to the fan I believe um, but these are both just uh, go on the common terminal here they basically just use the common terminal on the capacitor as a splitter for bringing power to that fan now it's also possible that you would have had a dedicated capacitor for your fan, in which case it probably would have been a 5 microfarad and you can replace that separately. Uh, but if you have a dual rated capacitor like this, I would just say go ahead and get the exact same one to replace it with. Uh, I will do my best to leave a link down in the description with uh, some of the most common capacitors and where you can buy them. And uh, also I'll try to put a, an, an affordable electrical tester that has the ability to test capacitors there as well. 
So we're gonna turn this on and see if it works all right. There we go. If this video helped you out, please rate it up and feel free to subscribe down below for more helpful videos. Hit that little bell icon if you wanna be notified of future videos. And thanks for watching. And we'll talk to you next one. I hope this saved you some money. If it did, um, yeah, help me out and hit that like button. We'll talk to you later.